Hello, hey. welcome to the patch. This week brought to you by Blue Apron and Movement Watches. Thanks to our sponsors for sponsoring this episode, this hour discussion of video games and video game news. It's like, Chris, oh, I'm Gus. I'm Adam. <laughs> Ashley. Ryan. And you Gus. wasted no time. I like it. I like, Get into this professional stuff. Well, I feel like it's, you know, the most wonderful time of the year for us. It's like, it's our Christmas, you know, right before E3. Is it's it? Like, it's like the week before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. When no one will buy anything for you. Like but, you ask or something, well, like, wait, can I have is, the, you're like you're like you're like I want to get this thing. And they're like, don't get that thing. You can't get that. But the thing. Xbox is, One is two ninety nine now. Yeah, but this is like Suckers. November because you're waiting to see what gets released so you can want it at Christmas. Right. It's like no I, I, May, I, May is like the time when you don't expect games to come out, and then you have Doom and Uncharted and Overwatch come out. Yeah, but we're talking about leading up to E three, right? Yeah. So I mean, I'm worried about the games. I'm playing also, right it's now. June now. It's June yeah, today, it's June. as of today. Today is June. So Microsoft announced a fifty dollar. A temporary fifty dollars discount on the Xbox One until June thirteenth. Well, Coincidentally, the day of their E three presser. Yeah, when yeah. they stop making the why. Xbox One. Huh. It's like we got a large inventory of Xbox Ones that might not sell in about two weeks. <laughs> what are we gonna do to move away. them right now? Also, Don't you remember what they did um, with last generation? Is they with the Slim? Is they were like this beautiful Xbox Slim? We're announcing it today. Oh, and it's on its way to stores right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, I mean, like they'll. I'm seeing that again. Oh, I sure. guarantee you that's happening in yeah, two weeks. Of course, they, they, you should not buy a console right now. What, whatever you buy right now is going to be obsolete in, in 12 days. Yeah. It's, well, consoles by their natures are obsolete the second you buy them. Absolutely. But. As long as the but, platform is static, but, but if it's you're, okay. Yeah. If you're going to invest three, four hundred dollars into something, like they should be honest and be like, hey, maybe just don't buy this shit because it's going to. I mean, no, they claim they that it's going to stay. I know, I know, but it's fucking bullshit. At least, they're, they're, from what I've heard, the claim is that with future Microsoft products, at least they're going to be backwards compatible, which is and forwards. Compatible, and which forwards I don't compatible. Get. Okay, are they talking about like the way that Sony said that they will make a, a PS4.5 and it has like it will play all of the, your PlayStation 4 will play all the games, etc. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't think Sony's actually said that. I don't know that Sony I, made I that claim. This is all Microsoft speculation. Oh, is it? I, I think, yeah. No, I think they have said uh, that. Thought, that I, no, 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 no. There was like an email. There was like an email with their guidelines of like if you're a developer, you can you you can make a game that will be have an improved version on the 4.5. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it has keep, to have a version for the 4. It can't be missing any features. With with the exception of like if you're if we'll say Halo I know it's not a PlayStation game but we'll say Halo can have four player co op on the four point five but it can it, it, you can allow it to have two player. Co-op I've also seen four. emails that say Satan is risen. Let's so I mean, there's an email <laughs> that says anything. Right. 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 Yeah, Let's we, also keep in mind uh, that I, I Sony hasn't announced a they haven't announced right. the Neo right. until there's it's, a consumer facing statement. I take it all with a grain of salt. Don't buy a fucking yeah. console oh, right now. Oh, this is the best time to make up the most insane stuff. And then if it turns out it was right, we were just oh, future. I got sales. it. Okay, okay, I got yeah. it. All right. Uh, Nintendo is going to win E3 with a revolutionary POD, uh, puppies on demand service. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, where with your is game this the pad to Nintendo dogs in, uh, in in the NX, yes, you can hit a button to buy Nintendo the new Nintendo dogs, and a real dog shows up. Then when you close the game, someone comes and takes the dog away. Puppies on demand. Probably okay. on demand. All right. Are we already doing E3 predictions? Yeah, this is yes, your craziest. This is, this is, this is wild E3 predictions. E3 predictions. Otherwise, we have next week, and then and then there's E3, and then you know we need a little bit of distance so that we our predictions can yeah, simmer. So, so, or anybody so, so. can get simmer. one of the mill predictions right. It's the crazy off the wall ones that are the real the winners. I like puppies on demand. Before Especially. we get any further, uh, real yeah. fast, you just remind me about something. Uh, what uh, do you know? Do we know yet what we're going to be doing for the patch in two weeks on the fifteenth when E three is going on? We're going to be doing a couple of things. We're going to be doing um, so E three is we're doing uh, what we did last year. Sort of, we're going to be doing another three day live stream from E three in conjunction with YouTube. Uh, so we'll be doing. Um, Right now, I think the plan is for uh, a six-hour stream Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and I just scheduled in at least an hour a day where we all sit down and, and talk. Sure. Uh, so, so, so if people we're who basically norm- three patches. People who uh, wa- normally watch live on the Rich Teeth website should just be aware of the schedule change. Uh, if you do watch the patch normally on YouTube, uh, you can watch inc- – incidentally, you can watch it live on roosterteeth.com. Uh, but um, – and then we record on Wednesdays, but on the fifteenth, that may not be the case due to our E three coverage. Yeah, we'll be doing full on streams, and they'll be on the Rooster Teeth YouTube channel. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Also, this will uh, be my first E three, so I expect to be starry eyed and all. Really? Yeah. Look at you. I'm happy we can take you this year, right? Yeah, I get to go. I'm in the middle of, of finalizing everything. Um, all four of us will be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll all be doing fun stuff, talking to developers. We've got some really good games on the lineup. Which I'm excited about. Yep. Um, and we'll also be doing um, two mini streams on Sunday. 
um, around the EA and Bethesda press conferences. Mm -hmm. So well, I just want to like do predictions leading into the conferences, and then we'll do some comment live commentary, and then a wrap up afterwards. It'll be simple. It'll be fun. We're gonna have such a good time. Uh, and then some of us will be appearing on Jeff Keeley's live stream on Monday. Yeah. All right. Sorry so it sort of goes us sorry, to Jeff. First to three. Us. I'm excited. You too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Hey. Don't you? Okay, you boys. Don't get lost. Don't spend all your money in one place. And it takes at least 15, 20 Wait, minutes to get anywhere. Will Don't someone think it take my money there? Take less. Uh, just, I thought this was all just demo yeah, stuff. Yeah, all the, all the food, food vendors. I was yeah. going to go with glass cutters and be ready to just take what I wanted. But the, the food vendors will take the all of your money. I hear the convention center <laughs> cheese steak or che cheeseburgers are good. Is what? That uh, thing? First, I, that's the first I've ever heard of. You right. know, I don't know that I've ever eaten at E3. Really? I All think right. I might get us catering. Yeah, it's like normally so hectic, there's no time and the That's lines right. are so long. Yeah, no, totally. So it's like normally you wait till night to eat. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt anyway, our, yeah. our, our our E3 predictions wild with speculation. a little bit of note, but what's, what's wild speculation? Continue. Me? Whoever. Okay, so if they do talk about the NX, it is going to be a standalone VR device. Ooh. They said it won't replace the Wii U, but it's going to be basically a console that sits on your head. It's going to be bulky yeah. and ugly as shit. Um, but it will be Nintendo's version of VR. It'll probably be terrible too, mm -hmm. but. And it comes with a yoga game. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like Zoom HoloLens, but if HoloLens was VR instead of AR. Correct. And bad. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's definitely going to be bad, but that's you Nintendo's. Think you're, you're really guaranteed, you feel like strongly it's going to Listen, be a bad product. Every time Nintendo comes out with a new console or device, it's a gimmick. Like, that's that's their thing. And the, the big gimmick right now is VR. So if I had to make a wild guess. I would say potentially they're looking at the VR. Well, space. here's the thing though: is Nintendo is always, and you know, whether it worked or not, like they always come up with a gimmick that the entire industry buys into. Right, and they're uh, generally well, like the they don't. Let's not go with always. They did a great job with the 3DS. They did a great job with the Wii. No one's bought into the Wii U, so it's not always. But people well, have no, bought I mean, into the idea of the second screen experience. Second which, screen experience, that's true. motion uh, control, second, which I mean, inspired an entire range that, of motion products that no one liked. I, I'm no, not no, saying no. it took you, off like crazy. You're totally right. They're generally yeah. the first in line for these things. Maybe they're just a little behind this time. I mean, they had. I, I, I have a feeling like what well, it's going to be a new gimmick because that's what they do. But like, I feel like. If it's if they're gonna capitalize on a gimmick, it's gonna be VR. Do you think it's gonna be you get to be Mario? <laughs> I think that I mean it's Nintendo. They tend to go against the grain whenever possible. I don't think they're gonna follow on everyone else's gimmicks. VR has been around for years now, so they they did it first. They did they did their first they one. Yeah. yeah, right. right. <laughs> so um, I I would say they're gonna go in the opposite direction. They're gonna make ungames. Ungame. They're, they're going to take they're your favorite video games. They're going to teach you how games. to go out into real life and do things. They're actually the NX is just a board game platform where you can play Mario Party on a board game board. Ah. And you have to Fucking act so out stupid. all of the mini games in real life. Yeah, you have to give you costumes <laughs> and you're the actual characters. That sounds fun as shit. Hmm. That, just, <laughs> that actually sounds great. Can we do that? <laughs> hey, can you do we that? Can, do can that. do that. Do that for a free play. Sure. Let's all play. Let's all play Mario Party IRL. Um, oh. Yeah. If we're going, so we're outlandish predictions. I think Kingdom Hearts 3 will actually be playable. Kingdom Hearts 3. That's, is that, that is, is not outrageous. That is not that, wild speculation. That is, the crazy, that's wild yeah, that, desperation. that is the craziest speculation. <laughs> Puppies on demand will <laughs> happen before Kingdom Hearts is playable in two yeah, weeks. That's not, that's not wild speculation. They should have playable. They showed people playing it. They showed gameplay. You're yeah. right. They should. <laughs> no, they showed gameplay oh, they showed, of it. But I mean, she says, like, actually have it there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they showed gameplay playable. of it. That's not outlandish. Sure did. Get crazier. That would that is the out, most crazy. outlandish thing I can think <laughs> so, of. I cannot wait to see that game. So far, I've seen like the same like couple seconds that, of footage for the last. They are doing three a big years, Hero being 6. like, oh, we're working. We're I mean, I oh, am so excited for San Francisco. Yeah, you know, <gasps> Overwatch reminds me a lot of Big Hero Six. It's me too. Like the it's, like just the stylization. The style. Of it. Some of the characters, like Diva and Lucio specifically, feel like you could put them in Big Hero Six and they would not be out of place at all. I would take that crossover. Yeah. Absolutely. That would Absolutely. be a fun crossover. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we'll see... Okay, wild speculation. I think there'll be some kind of, with the, this this Microsoft console thing evolving to be more iterative, I think we might actually see a PC emulator that'll let you play uh, Xbox titles. Isn't that already... On PC? Wait. Isn't kind of that's called, Windows... Isn't, isn't Universal yeah, Windows, Windows platform? Some, well, yeah, Universal no, Windows platform is already kind of shooting for that. But uh, we haven't seen an actual... They haven't said that they're going to release a thing that will be backwards compatible with Xbox One. So you're talking about allowing you to play non-UWP games yes. on PC? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
like some kind of rapper. What are you, what are you hitting for yeah. 360 or Xbox original games? Well, if you can emulate the Xbox One, then the Xbox One emulates the 360. So there you go. <laughs> I don't think it would quite like that. How far down this yeah. end we go? How, How much more CPU overhead do you have to add on to, to it to figure this out? Uh, well, the, as, the, as you go down, though, it requires less and less. So who cares? I, I would settle for <laughs> Xbox original emulation. I could play Crimson Skies again. Nope. Return to Castle Wolfenstein. You, you, know? you, you really no, want to play all these really non-HD wouldn't... games? Not really, but I think I do. Yeah, is you, you absolutely like, don't. You want to play like in a little postage stamp, <laughs> yeah. postage stamp size window? I did play original Xbox games on 360 for a while, and then I stopped for that reason. Like it just it looks like shit. Eventually, not there anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only games that I can go back and play now, the the only really old games uh, tend to be ones that do mods. Like I can go back and play Morrowind because there are amazing mods for it. They just overhaul the entire world, mm -hmm. so it doesn't look like a muddy blur. And it's if you're playing it with on a PC, you can still run it at a higher resolution, which makes things look better usually just by itself. Yeah, that's a, yeah, and it ends up being a game by game basis. I went back and I tried to play The Longest Journey again recently, which is one of my favorite point and click adventure games of all time. Super great, nice female lead who's really sympathetic and smart and cool and everything. And it's plus it's got a science world and a magic world. Your <laughs> eyes like gleam; they have like a sparkle There's in them, and you look up. Twinkle, yeah, that's a, oh, you're totally man, like an anime twinkle that when you were talking about journey. that. So happy about it, but I can't go back and play it because it's fixed resolution, and so it's Ooh. in a window like this big. A it's like and they really stamp. don't. No one, no one's made like a mod or something to fix that. No, I checked. There's no, and there's there's like no texture mod, so I'm I'm just I, sort of like I have to leave that one behind, and I it for, breaks my heart. I there forget. are follow up games to it now, but they're not the same, man. Yeah. I, I forget what game it was, but it was one of the Command and Conquer games. It might have been like Red Alert that only played, like it was a fixed resolution, it only played like 640 by 480, but if you went into the INI file, you could change the X and the Y value of pixels and have it play at any other resolution. That was like the first time I felt like such a hacker. Like, going <laughs> in, I was like, I was like I'm modding the game. I'm going to get make it play it by 800 by 600 resolution monitor. You know, you know what's the most, though, like, yep. the most strikingly bad thing about playing old like Xbox original games or things like that from that era is not the graphics. It's the UIs for all the games are so fucking ugly. Yeah. And they're huge. They're huge. It I remember the original, um, and this wasn't, oh. this is not an Xbox game, but I remember the original UI for EverQuest. Oh my god, it was enormous. I went back, about a year ago, I went back and replayed Knights of the Old Republic, and I was like, wait, did you play it on PC? PC. That game also had fucked up resolution, yeah, and it still does Yeah, Steam. it still does, and yeah. I was like, I can't play this game. It was like, at the time I loved it, but it was like, holy shit, like, yeah. gameplay, <laughs> core gameplay has changed so much. I still finished it again, but I was did like, did you really? Yeah, I was like, this game is a challenge it's to get fucked, through. dude. I, try, I got like an hour or two in, I was like, I'm not gonna do this. It's pretty telling, it's like, when the game can be ported to an iPad, it's like, oh, okay, that's, that's about where it was. Yeah. in the technology curve. But I remember at the time, sitting down, and like, this is maybe the best game yeah. ever. Yeah. One of my favorite games uh, back then also, like this probably from like 99 or so, was um, um, a turn-based like combat game called uh, Silent Storm, set in World War II. Uh, it was like an alternate reality thing. Anyway, uh, and I, someone messaged me recently that it was on sale on Steam. It was like two bucks. I was like, of course I'm going to buy it for two bucks. And it's the same thing. Like I went through to start playing it. I was like, Holy crap, this interface is awful. How did I, like I spent probably a hundred hours playing this game? Dude, they, they used to have a lot of games with that like you like UI just actually are, like separate from the game itself. Like if you looked at the original XCOM, it was like the game was here and the UI was the rest of the screen. Just yeah. like it was like a layer, like watching a television screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These games are fucked. Yeah. There was um if, if it helps at all, I think uh Knights of the Old Republic at least has stood the t has stood the test of time for people who weren't familiar with it the first time. That is one of um Bernie's oldest J D. It's one of his favorite games. He hmm. plays it all the time. Wow. He and he and he loves it. It's still a great game, but man, that interface. <laughs> <laughs> and moving around. Like even like you can't free cam look around. No. Like and that's so weird to me. You have to like it's it's all I wonder if in. they improved it for the iPad version. I've never tried it, but that would be they... fucked if they improved well, the iPad version and not the PC version. Well, the PC version was it. clearly just released without any care because it doesn't run full screen on any monitors until you oh. fuck with it. <laughs> yeah, God no. Yeah, it was that was my first challenge with yeah. it. It was like, oh, this it looks like poop. Yeah. <laughs> Did you make your crazy uh, oh, by the yeah, way, was, so you, so, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah, no, right to you. you. Who said it? So one of you said something. You said it. I have another crazy E3 prediction. Okay. Right. 
Cats on demand. Follow up to Crimson Skies. New Crimson Skies. Oh game. man, really? Crimson Skies. I would too. love that. I, I fucking love Crimson Skies. I played Skies, the dude. shit out of Crimson that, like, Skies. Everything back in the about day. that game, like the the campaign. You're a fucking airplane for one. That's cool. <laughs> and there was a there was a great <laughs> multiplayer mode, like flying around, like fun arcadey yeah. uh, airplane game. Fucking awesome, dude. It was a great game. I mean, I'm always disappointed they've never touched that franchise again. No, there aren't yeah. a lot of good arcadey multiplayer flight games. I guess that's a very very specific genre, though. It is. That uh, game, that game had what's uh Thunder? No, World of Warplanes. Yeah, that's that, there's that's that like, one. Wait, there's World of War Thunder. War Thunder is the tank one, but I think it also has planes World, World, World of War, War Thunder planes. also has planes. Yeah. Okay. World well, of War so those, the, I mean, both of those like, are like Crimson Skies had different ships that were like sort of like when you play Twisted Metal and you have different different right. characters that were had different abilities. Like it was sort of class based in mm -hmm. that sense, where you had different strengths, different well, weaknesses. Again, that does sound like. Uh, I guess, I guess you're right. I guess you're of, right, but uh, it's not like Outlandish. You don't have like a tornado move or something like that. That is true. There are no that's, tornado that's, moves. That's Sometimes cool it shit. feels like I got hit by a tornado move when yeah. I play those yeah. games. Yeah. <laughs> War Thunder is a lot more like if World War II was an arcade style game right. and not right. just like a crazy alternate reality game. Yeah. All right, crazy prediction. Okay. Continue. Uh, mine was the emulator thing, but if I had oh, to go oh, further than that, that uh, modular Xboxes. That's not that modular crazy because they kind of talked about that. But modular Xboxes? I think so. Have they? Yeah, I think. I think. Uh, they said they or look, at this point, I'm losing track between that like was a wild they've talked about no, or uh, no, they, they, these he, have theoretically been leaked. I in think such it was Phil Spencer yeah? said future Xbox platforms will have a focus on upgradability. Well, it makes me think mm. back to uh, the PS2 cell technology. Where it's right. like this processor is going to be in all different kinds of devices in your house, and you know theoretically, I mean they never really did anything with it, but theoretically, like your TV could have another processor, or right. what you know all your every every device you right. have could you know contribute to like your and your then home your blender doesn't work unit. when you're trying to play a video game. Got it? Right. It's like oh you know I I need to generate more frames. Turn off the microwave. You know <laughs> I'm trying to play VR here. What's wrong with you? It would be nice though if the Xbox One that we have upstairs could help the Xbox One downstairs while it's yeah. not doing anything else. Like well, you could run them an SLI over your network. <laughs> Wasn't yeah, that the sweet. concept behind the the cloud based processing? The Xbox was, was yeah, I think talented. so. I think yeah. um, one of the challenges yeah. that everyone's coming up with cloud based processing <laughs> oh, is that for games, like that processing needs to happen yeah. so fast. It's not available. The amount when you of lag. It. If you have, I mean, never mind Wi-Fi. If you have it on a network at all, it's going to have a lot of trouble. Like, what's it going to render for you that you're going to need? In yeah, and well, that I mean, they're, they're the best services for those like on live, like even. Like the commercial services of, of like cloud based gaming, it like still had a lot like a like a like a second a millisecond latency. I mean that was their tip poll it. though when they were talking about why the Xbox isn't holding up to the the PlayStation in terms of just raw computing powers. Like, well, we got the power of the cloud. It's like, well, they, we're they, a few years like in now. How, what is how, that? How about? robust their Xbox Live service was now, and then like the first week that it was out, Xbox Live was down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Um, and it's just there's a built in like on the networking side of things. There's a built in latency. Even if you've got a great yeah, yeah. network, like yeah. you're looking, and even if it's a fast connection, you're like you got thirty to fifty second, thirty to fifty milliseconds of latency yeah. Yeah. at best, and it's like that's already you're well, you're, you're fucked. Yeah, I mean we all know that, but what was it for? Like, well, that was the the question I always had then was, well, and maybe it's for processing your friend activity. I sure, think, I think that was just pie in the sky dreams. Like it might be I, like I, other, I other doubt features. It. I imagine like, they've had plans. Like, there's got to be something you can do for games. The, like, it's some the kind same of tracking like, so, so, that doesn't need to happen. It's not games so, necessarily, but the thing I would think is, like, in uh, when you're creating clips with, like, game DVR, when you export, you know, if you could use the cloud for rendering, and it's not all happening locally. Like, not things right, that you need okay. Twitch reaction to, but you just need, like, processing power. Well, just Sony bought, what was, that, what was that platform Sony bought that they ended up using for oh, their PS3 games? And, um, like, you stream all those games. Uh, oh, Pop Quiz was, was not that prepared. That was... Something with a G. It was ex no. Um, G um, I want to say Genji, but that's Overwatch. We're gonna no Gaijin. No, nope, that's, that's the side that's story. the guys that that's the well oh, that's the, the the developers that do yeah okay. No, it was. Uh, I'm looking it up. Regardless of Great the name line. of it, Gaikai. 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 Of course, it was Gaikai. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I had the first three letters you right. Did. I, I, lost, I totally lost my train of thought. Well, Sony did a similar thing. They yeah. bought it. They bought a streaming service, uh, Sys Tech, and then implemented it. And people use it to play PS3 games. But at least that was streaming. I mean, that's streaming a whole game. That right. wasn't like I'm going to integrate your processing power with my live. Game. Yeah, I guess it's not cloud computing. You're right. Uh, right, let me, I, I do have something I need to read here. Okay. Oh. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the patch is brought to you by Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high-quality ingredients taste better and are better for you, so it's important to know where your food comes from. Blue Apron knows that when you cook with incredible ingredients, you make incredible meals, so they set the highest quality standards for their community of artisanal suppliers, family-run farms, 
fisheries and ranchers. Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, which are really good, uh, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron is bringing you the best. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. With Blue Apron, you can customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients that can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Check out this week's menu and get your two meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash the patch. You love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron, so don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash the patch. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Thank you, Blue Apron, for sponsoring the patch and helping me make yummy food. Uh, hey, Ryan. Ugh. <laughs> you Are we still fighting? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, um, in other non E3 related news, uh, I guess there's was non E3 probably related Probably the biggest news? piece of news. What? The biggest, the biggest piece, piece of news, is, in, my opinion, is, in my opinion, is, is it, Overwatch po- porn being DMCA'd. No, we'll get to that <laughs> in a bit. The biggest piece of news, in my opinion, is AMD announcing the Radeon RX 480. Which it's uh, like I, I guess you know people. Say, I'm not as familiar with with PC hardware, so forgive me. I'm I, I'm still excited about it nonetheless. Because so it's a two hundred dollar it, card. Because it's a two hundred dollar so card that we got those numbers. It's a two hundred dollar card. It's VR ready. Eh, it, that's a label. Sure, sure, absolutely. But it is about fifteen percent less powerful from from current yeah. benchmarks than the 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 nine seventy, which is a four hundred dollar card. Yes. So you are technically getting a very powerful card for not a lot of money. Well the nine seventy as it stands today. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ten seventy. Ten seventy. I said okay. ten I meant ten seventy. Ten seventy. Um, okay, so it's so it's it's oh, it's not as so powerful as the ten seventy or the ten eighty that are the ten seventies coming out in June, but it is like half the cost of a ten seventy, fifteen percent less power, but that's still more powerful than the nine seventies and I believe the nine eighties. So it's gonna be able to run current VR games for the Vive which or is, the Oculus. Right, which I think is a really smart move. I mean I think it's, Nvidia's done a good job locking up like the mid market and the high end market, you know, now with the 1070 and yeah. 1080. And it's like, you know, if you're just trying to make a super low cost VR machine, yeah. you know, no, you save a couple hundred bucks off here. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, because it's... right now the 970 is the minimum for VR, right? That's yeah. like the minimum benchmark yes. that everyone's put out is don't have anything less than a 970. Which, which that's honestly, what Oculus says. So, honestly, so this is it's, better than the minimum. Yeah, that's that's sort of iffy. Um, I I have a 780 yeah. at home. 780 and, works, and a 780 works just fine. I play everything a, on it. Uh, with, with, over the arc of people developing things for the VR platforms, there was definitely a point where it got real bad, and that's when uh, I shelled out for a 980 Ti, and then sure. the, everybody optimized, and it's like, oh shit, it'll run on anything now. Yeah, yeah, but I think as the platform grows, you know, now that uh, they have they, they have mm-hmm. the 970 as a reference target, like yeah. they don't need to worry I, about supporting the older cards as they become. Right. I, right. I also feel like a lot of the VR games that are out now, they're cool and they're fun, but a lot of them do tend to be almost on the level of tech demos. There's Absolutely. not it there's not true, a yeah. lot of game to them. So once we actually get like real involved games that's going to shoot up. So I think it's probably best that it yeah. can that yeah. that's we, we definitely than need a now. We, we definitely need a growth in power yeah. for for everything. I mean, um the games that are running now even on the the, the most powerful card except for I guess the 1080s now now, but like even on a 980 people are having stuttering problems with certain games. I'm not um, but I think the the exciting part about the 480 coming out is that the AMD always has a uh, like a higher tier. They have a mm-hmm. like a 390 or a, th- or a 2890. So Theoretically, they'll have a four ninety, and maybe it's going to be a three four hundred dollar card. Right, and I'm it could be it could, it could rival the ten eighty, or maybe at least beat the ten seventy. Yeah, mid market. Um, we'll and, and maybe that'll force Nvidia to come down a little bit on price. Yeah, I don't think it will, mm-hmm. um, because there there either. there is a at least for me like. I don't use AMD cards for one specific reason, and that's the driver support. It's almost, awful, yeah. Almost every Deplorably new, yeah, bad. Almost every new game that comes out, there is a driver issue that causes it to either crash or not run well or have you turn down certain graphic settings. And like certain games like Wildstar, uh, we have like people that ran on AMD cards here, and they never fucking patched it. And so there was always performance issues with Wildstar. And like I don't want to deal with that. I, it's like... Uh, it's, well, I'd rather pay a premium than have to deal with bullshit drivers. Ideally, I, I think you know. Well, this is maybe is a good um, also a good premium and get better performance. So it's not really a premium. You're, you're right. Paying you're, more money and getting better performance and better drivers. Sure, but if drivers were equivalent and your yes. performance was like 
matching your card, then it would be, you know, obviously you get way more performance out of per, per, per dollar out right. of the, the 280. Well, if, you, if, you know, this kind of strategy that for, of AMD's works in order to get, you know, let's say flood the market with a lot of low cost cards, you know, then maybe we start seeing better optimization on the development side of things. It uh, hasn't uh, happened listen, yet. I think I'm, just, I'm saying like if they are able to flood the market with like mm -hmm. cheap VR cards and like it becomes like a standard low end VR build is like you get this card. Then you know maybe we would see I think that kind of optimization. Yeah, I think it's fantastic, especially for VR. I mean, more people are. It's a lower barrier to entry, so more people will buy it, and then the VR headsets will get cheaper. Um, well, is all it for competition? Yeah, right. I'm all for multiple companies supplying you stuff. Right now, um, the barrier for for VR, the barrier for entry is so high. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, the the Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick, <gasps> he actually just went out and said. VR is like no good right now. He said it's um, specifically. He said it's way too expensive. There's no market for a two thousand dollar entertainment device that requires you to dedicate a room to the activity. I don't know what people could be thinking. Well, it, he's basically just listen. Saying, I went, and I get the too much room complaint. Like we have, like we're putting a VR machine on a cart so that we can move it into another room because mm -hmm. we just don't like our our computer room. We can't. There's no room for it. Like Teddy keeps bashing walls and desks <laughs> and stuff, and so. It's, like, you know, I, I get that, but the barrier to entry cost is probably the biggest thing, and that's tough. It, it's, it, dude, it's a high barrier to entry, and the room space sucks, but, like, I think the more people, if you give someone a vibe to test out, like, it's, I don't want to say it's life-changing, but it's pretty close to it. Like, it, it changes the way you play games, and it's, it, it is incredible, and, and once we see more game support for that, and hopefully that barrier entry drops a little bit, I think it's going to be a bigger deal than it is now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's... I feel like the way that Oculus approached the setup was would have been a better slow roll for that because it's not you don't require a room. Right. Their their initial approach is Closer for stuff. sitting down. Mm -hmm. It's for traditional control mm -hmm. they, just with essentially a, a that could evolve. Monitor. They, they've made so many missteps. They've, they've, the they community really have. is so against them. They've just they, they just did another wasted thing where everything. The, all the goodwill. A, there's a game called Super Hot VR mm -hmm. that was like originally demoed with the Vive, and there were Vive controllers, and you were doing super hot stuff. And then Oculus paid them a bunch of money, and they were like, "Okay, we're do ex exclusively developing for the Oculus." Um, I think this is the right choice. Like, no, you just made a lot of fucking money. Yeah. And and people are, of course, pissed about that. And I get it. It's a business decision, but it's they're just making a lot of decisions that make people hate Oculus for their. They are. Their, they're they're Facebook. making a closed environment, and yeah. they're they not delivering units. Uh, oh yeah, no. People, people still are still them. getting their pre order units while other people are walking. Uh, into I check both sides. People, people who have received their units still don't have them because they've been stolen. You know where it is. Come get it. Have, come, you, come. Have, you, have you guys done the fixy thing yet? The fixy thing. Yeah. I give you my order number. So no, I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Look, it works. It's just ten degrees off. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's got a. a, 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 bit I, of a bit I think it's it. got a gravity issue. Oh, fuck, dude. It's yeah. uh, it's leaning. But I don't, I don't. I don't have that. That'll make you sick. Here's the other problem: is the the people that have the like the red screens. Uh, I don't have that issue with the. I had one not of seen that issue. You had it. No, I had not seen had it. Not, I, yeah. not, I don't have an Oculus. I have a Vive. Uh, the Oculus, apparently there's a lot of people having screens that um, instead of going to black, it goes to red. Like That's great. Like the blood that will flow right. when the Oculus becomes but the, sentient. But when you take the headset off it, oh, are you talking about like just in between like transitions and games? Yes. Like the blacks are reds? Yes. That's fucked. Yes. I will, I will say though that um, for Sometimes all of... Sometimes only in one eye. <laughs> weird. Weird. For all of Oculus' missteps, it has done a great job of getting the name, like its own name out there. There Dude. was some research showing that, uh, I mean, you know, of course not everyone in the world is familiar with VR yet. My mom doesn't know what the hell VR is, but that um, all people surveyed about 50, no, 80% of people have heard of VR and were vaguely familiar with it. And Oculus was far and away the one that people had heard of most. Oddly enough, PlayStation VR was the second one. Vive was like five percent. Oh, dude, wow. I, I don't expect people to know what the Vive is. Well, I think even uh, us, I, I, we, I we had trouble figuring out how to pronounce it. Like I when they first announced Vive. it, remember? We were I, like, I wasn't paying Vive? attention to it like before because I was thinking, you know, Oculus was the pioneer, and you thought they would be making the, the premier product, mm -hmm. and they are kind of like doing something good with touch, but that's not out yet. It's and out. they made a bunch of missteps, and then thankfully we got a Vive in the office, and I played that, and it was like, this is what I'm going to get again. I'm all for competition yeah, and absolutely. multiple manufacturers you're right, you're right, creating you're right, things. You're right, you're right. It's absolutely. a good thing. I think yeah. so too. I think it's good to have as many as possible. One, because they'll drive each other, um, and then eventually the consumers <laughs> will crown a winner. What? Oh, no, I'm laughing. It's because the it, the the origin story of Oculus is very strange in the sense that most of that technology came from uh, Valve. So that Valve did a lot of the research that 
gave Oculus its initial step up. And then as Valve tends to do lately, it seems like they're great at making an idea and then someone else makes the product. But this time they're like, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. And then they made their own product, but they didn't do... And Oculus had they, all the buzz. They did, Just, do they but have they a, did something smart this time because I got HTC to make it. They did. Do they have a um, uh, an install like a listed install base for the Oculus? Like how many people have one? I don't, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think they released those no. numbers. Okay. I don't think Vive has either. Have they? People were no. like developers were speculating uh, for Vive that they're around like sixty thousand right now. How many? Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. That's that's the scary well, you part. Can't, they like they took pre-orders and then. Since then, you haven't really been able to buy one. Yeah. Other than the... Actually... They released so, like a thousand so Best Buys. Mine was ordered day one of mm -hmm. the shipping. So April 5th. It arrived mid-May. You're uh, talking about Vive or... Vive. Oh, so you're saying Vive has 60,000. Yes. I, I like. I would have to assume Oculus has less. Because I would uh, have pe to, people, I people that pre-ordered way earlier than Oculus, I still go on that subreddit and they're like, I still haven't gotten my fucking order. I'm canceling yeah. going to Vive. There's, there's people, like a whole people, group dedicated to waiting for the... Yeah. Free. Yeah, and I, I think three months after... Oculus pre-orders. I ordered a Vive and gotten it before the Oculus has arrived. Yeah, that's rough. I'm trying to see if I can find any sales figures here, and I cannot see. I know the yeah. numbers right now are really small. It's all it's all speculation. Well, yeah, like, there's no which killer is, game for it. Well, right, but this is also reflective of why we have a bunch of indie titles um, and not a bunch of AAA things. But I think those indie titles, like for what they are, being in a game changes like changes your perception on like what a good game is. Like I played this game called Horror Z, mm -hmm. and if that was not in VR. I would think it was total trash. But it's pretty. Yeah, it's not attractive because but. I because I can get into that game with my friend and we can basically play House of the Dead and be next to each other when he's in Philadelphia mm -hmm. and kill zombies together. It's like fucking. It's like the value add for that is like a thousandfold. I do feel like VR is one of those things that the experience markets itself. I think one of the smartest things they can do is get demo units in stores yeah. for well, people to and try. They've got Which a huge presence in the E3 show floor. <coughs> they, they, right, but E3, the E3 is, that doesn't press. matter. E3 That's is fair. not... They, they need to get it like in Walmart, they have, Target. They, so they, have it, they have it in Microsoft stores in certain... And they have it in major cities. The problem is it's also... I mean, I guess it's not a problem, but it's limited to 18 and over. But I guess you're not going to have $800 and you to can't spend buy on a fucking thing. You, Most of the time, you like can't you buy one look in the at store, it, and you just can't get but, it. But like Vive has been pretty good about their turnarounds on orders. I saw people at least the week mine shipped. People mm -hmm. were ordering them that week and having them shipped the same week. Really? Yes. Vive Vive's had a really up. good supply chain for a little bit. I don't know if that's changed. Well, I mean, they they were a hardware manufacturer going into this. Right. Uh, HTC, HTC is, is. Yeah. most of their most of their problems were because of Digital River and not because of HTC. So just yeah, their order for film was terrible. Mm. Um, I will say, having now again, I, I've compared the two screens. Uh, I still think Oculus has the edge in comfort and just uh, it, so they have different both of them have a sort of barn door thing going on so Oculus has sort of like a, a peripheral border here and here whereas a Vive and I didn't even realize it until I compared it to the Oculus you've got the goggle effect you've got actually round barn doors on both eyes where you can see around both sides it's 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 almost a, you, unless you look for it, it doesn't really occur to you that it's there. But it's definitely you feel like you're wearing goggles, where it feels like you're wearing doing this with your hands with an Oculus. So, uh, like, I know what you're saying, and I haven't mm -hmm. used an Oculus, and I want to. But with the Oculus, I'm assuming it's the same as the Vive, where as soon as you're in a game, you forget about your FOV, you forget about having goggles on or anything like that. You do until the God Rays get you in the eye. That's the only problem with the Oculus. Okay. Which is not, I have not experienced in a game, uh, except uh, you got a little bit of it in, like, uh, I think it was Eve Valkyrie. Um, Eve Valkyrie, yeah, the, yeah, that's the same in Eve, not Eve Valkyrie. Um, Elite Dangerous on Vive apparently mm -hmm. has some major God Ray issues, but on that's Vive? Just, that's boring stuff. Yeah, on Vive. Well, it's it's relevant though. Well, we're talking about where, video games, yeah. so I mean, we're all about boring yeah. stuff and super <laughs> technical discussions. We're not really technical people. Uh, here, let me read this thing right here. Uh, I want to remind everyone: this episode of the patch is also brought to you by Movement Watches. It's been a while now since we cracked open these sharp-looking movement watch boxes. And we've had some time to reflect. Now, as promised, the quality of these watches are there and for an awesome price. In the style department, we constantly get compliments. Really unbelievable. Uh, my personal favorite is this black one. I stole this one from Blaine, actually. Uh, it's a black one with the blue little hands. I traded him my, my watch because it's my favorite. Uh, if you haven't had the chance yet to check to experience how a movement watch fits around your wrist. Oh, there's Ashley wearing hers. Uh, this is your chance. Movement watches start at just $95. Uh, when movement cut out the middleman with huge brand, big brand markups, the price of a stylish watch finally got affordable. Uh, a watch with department store quality for a fraction of the price. 
uh, movement has grown organically purely by supporters like you. So join their more than 1 million social media followers and get a movement watch today. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash patch. Uh, they'll give you 15% off your entire purchase. That's mvmtwatches.com slash patch. Thank you, Movement Watches, for sponsoring the patch. I actually really like these, too. I was looking because um, we've done a couple sponsorships with them now. I was like, it can't be that easy to take the band off. And I was like, look, it's got a thing. And it's like... Quick dead. release. It's so fast. Nice. I like it. That's nice. Uh, well, maybe we'll get a, a touch news update at E3. Well, you know <laughs> what else? Let's, let's get the shipping update. You know let's get else? people their fucking <laughs> units yeah. first. You know what else, though, it looks like we'll get at E3, it sounds like, is Xbox VR. You guys right. see there's what? there's listings now for well, um, I've Xbox he- I've heard VR games at E3. Rumors of this, and there's you know kind of the speculation about the um, what do they call it? the Scorpio, the Xbox One Scorpio, mm-hmm. is that it might be you know a third? lot. It's like the the iterative oh, Xbox One point five. Uh, edition, to support VR. To support VR. The, Potentially, uh, the, again, like we said earlier, I don't believe anything. That, until the, yeah, that, that was some of the speculation about the 4.5 was that it would be able to support Vive better because how the fuck is... How, or not Vive. PlayStation VR better because yeah. how is the PlayStation 4 running a VR headset? Well, I mean, that, that's why both of these consoles would be doing mid... I mean, not even mid-generation because at this point, they've been out two and a half years. How long was Xbox 360 out before the Slim? It was about Eight the same years? amount of time. Oh, oh Slim. Um... You know, but uh, but that specifically they're gunning for VR, and yeah. I think Xbox they've had f- at least four companies that have listed under the Xbox mm-hmm. VR tag for E3. So yeah, the uh, but also when the slim iteration occurred, that was just an aesthetic change. Yeah. It wasn't like anything that's true. And that's the, true. Aside from it trying was, to yeah, address internally, it. I mean, they tried to get rid of the, the red ring. Issues. Yeah, I think it was like right. I mean, but that's right. like but no, super no, no performance nothing, increases. Drive, right, just, like yeah. it's like a, maybe a new CD drive. And they made it glossy. Uh, Get your fingerprints all it, over. There's yeah. kind of an interesting flip too with the the Xbox and VR, which was, I mean, uh, Oculus has come bundled with the Xbox One controller and wireless dongle, so it seemed like there was some sort of relationship, at least from that, between Oculus mm. and, and well, Microsoft. But I think they've already just announced. Oh, sorry, no, no, go on. I was going to say that. they just announced that they're going to be partnering with HTC for uh, future VR endeavors. They have? I well, I, won't, I don't get like, uh, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that, but I just have to say that um, you know, Oculus has said they've said a lot of things and one of the things they said was that they would never work with console because consoles just can't do it. Uh, Palmer Lucky's been very pro PC, very oh. anti console with that. And so if you ask me, it makes perfect sense that they would announce in conjunction with Xbox because everything else Palmer Lucky has said, he's reversed on. Listen, <laughs> I yeah, exactly. I love Palmer Lucky, but the things he say don't mean anything. It, well, like, I think I think it makes sense. I mean, if if he, not, he, he if, might if have those beliefs. No like, other reason. The reason I would believe it is because Facebook is a PC platform, right? Like a uh, PC and phone platform, right. which is why, mm-hmm. like you know, you have like your Gear VR for mobile, and then like an Oculus for PC. It really doesn't have a user base or exist on consoles. So I think you know, just because of the fa- of the Facebook parent company aspect, you wouldn't see it. Uh, Oculus working on stuff for consoles. Yeah, although I mean, the Gear VR is apparently like the number one at this point. That's because people use that for porn. So I'm not saying porn, that's look, true. Porn, porn drives adoption. That's true. It, we could come out of this whole thing and Gear VR one because they said, "Yeah, porn it up." Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just because I'm not it's, saying, it's so I'm not easy saying that's for a ba- it's a fifty dollar porn device and that's not a bad thing. I'm saying it's not a gaming. Look, device. people will pay a lot more than that for porn devices. Spe- How much is the flashlight? Uh, Jack, but we'll find out. Speaking of porn, <laughs> speaking of porn, Overwatch. The, oh, you oh, the, the, I, I was fucking feeding you. I'm so you sorry. Sure You're just staring at me. The, like, oh, the, what are I, you look, saying? I got this. No, I know. I, I so saw it. They, the Overwatch Ooh. porn community is a very big community. The Overwatch porn <laughs> community. So I, Pornhub released numbers. I don't, did I'm you pulling put, it up you, right you now. This? Yeah, I've got it right the, here. The, they have like an 800% increase in Overwatch porn searches. 817% increase. Uh, uh, yeah. When, when Overwatch came out. Who's over, winning? Over, uh, well, well, yeah. Who's winning? Which well, one? Does it have like a character that's getting the most attention? Uh, so, it's Tracer. <laughs> And like right. the number one search for Overwatch porn is Overwatch Tracer, and then the cartoon Overwatch. If you look at the countries, America is not even in the top ten. Yeah, what, then what can you guess? Did you saw the uh, art, article um, already? I'm, right? No, I haven't pulled it up yet. So um, what? What's the number one country in the world searching for Overwatch porn? Overwatch porn, number one in the on, world. On Pornhub, according South to that. Okay, Korea. so we're looking for someone repressed. England. What did you Ooh. say? I said South Korea. Okay. South Korea. South Korea. That's what? Good guess. You know your you know your porn co- co- countries. Good. I mean, uh, I know the countries that like video games. The yeah. UK has no representation on here, I believe. So okay, well, the, my my apologies to the Brits. The thing you that are we're talking not about remotely repressed is that 
people really like their Overwatch porn, and they're taking it all down. So they make what, it with source filmmaker, right? They take they've taken models and created SFM models to look like yeah. Overwatch yeah, characters, and then just naked. It's cr- no. Let very, me look at porn very, very, yeah. for purely for research. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, incredibly do lewd stuff. Like it's it's as much porn as any other porn. They're just animating it themselves, and I get why Blizzard probably wouldn't want to have that their IP uh, with a bunch. Oh of- Oh God. Yeah, oh. no, there's what? a bunch hold of dicks. Hold on, hold on, just hold on. Just oh turn God! It around, turn it around this way. Were you just that quickly oh, you aroused? Just see, you see dicks. Yeah, there's no, dicks everywhere. Just, well, okay, that's <laughs> lots of dicks. Oh, was, oh. oh. number Tracer. one search, Overwatch Tracer. Oh yep. my! And there's some diva. Okay, so, sure. Yeah, they're taking all that down, but they're going as far as to like find Tracer art. and diva having fun. Then whose dick is that? You know, <laughs> Strap they're, go, on? they're going as far as yeah. to find yours. They're, they're going as far as to find fan art. And taking down whole blogs. Oh, well, there's real porn. Aww. Like Tumblr people oh, are like, <laughs> real like porn? Tumblr Tumblr bloggers are posting like their their naked tracers, and then over when Blizzard's coming in and be like, take down your fucking blog. The NCA, it's crazy. Blizzard's I mean, taking on Tumblr, yeah, Oof. and and all, all 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 Overwatch porn. I am. I just feel like whoever is doing that doesn't have much of a grasp on how the internet works. Tumblr is porn central, isn't it? I don't know. There's, is it? As, it my, not, my understanding is that there's a ton of porn on Tumblr. I know that's Tumblr like a fanfic is, site. Yeah, it's it's. Well, that's like that's, I guess that is oh, kind of. I just learned something. Of the we tend to experience what about about sex? Gus? Like, yeah. about uh, how uh, about porn? What? So the third mo- and I didn't understand this until I read it right now. The third most popular search is Overwatch F U T A, and I didn't know what that meant. F U T A. Okay, wait. Did you have a guess? Uh, I'm thinking um, of like fat F-U- upper pubic area, but that's not a T. Hold on, was, um, yeah, the, uh, you missed somehow. Female the under twenty Futa. anal. Futa. You're not gonna guess. If, if, if this you all are like, well, this, way, this, is, no, this is like a hentai is? thing, I, I did right? Not know, but it is a hentai thing. Yeah, no, it oh. sounds familiar. Does that have to do with what referring is? to the hentai term futanari, meaning a character who mostly appears female but has male genitalia? <laughs> Oh, so that might go. have been that I might think explain. I've seen, I that think I've thing seen a cartoon yeah. porn like that before. Yeah. So all right, there we go. Um, that, that's enough of that. Speaking but, of speaking of Overwatch butts, have you seen yeah. a, th- a popular thing called show budding? Show budding? Oh, does this have to do with tracer posing? It has to do yeah, tracer, diva, whatever. But it's like butt pose. Everyone on the subreddit posts their play of the games, and at the end they go and emote. Here, here, watch. They're like, here's play of the game. Well, you have to we should also talk about play of the game in general. We'll, we'll talk about that this. after this. So it's, it's so you you make a play of the game, yeah, okay. and then there's people like, all right, now, now I'm gonna do this thing. Watch this, watch this. So I, a I know that I just did amazing. And so butt pose. They, they pose and pose. Okay. And that was funny the first time, but like I'm seriously playing games now. Well, I'll see I'll see a teammate make a play and then stand there and do an emote, and they get fucking killed because they're trying to show their butt off. Oh, thank God I'm playing on console where no one ever does anything that good. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. I, I, I've sound, definitely noticed a lot of play. It's true. The play of the games silly. on the console are real sad. There was a play of the large. game the other day where it was Torbjorn uh, killing people on a roof, and then he like looks over and looks up um, Black Widow's skirt. Yeah, or Widowmaker's skirt. Yeah, I always call her Black Widow too. Yeah, I don't he just spends the last ten seconds of the the play of the game just like trying to get a better <laughs> angle up Getting the skirt. Caught. Yeah, that's awesome. And not realizing what he would later see that again. Are and we, so would everyone are we else. clear to talk about Overwatch now? Oh, we, we can actually talk, talk about. Oh, yeah. is this is Overwatch throw in there. Hour. So, uh, the what I was getting at with Microsoft and HTC is so they're they're someone might be dying in the background. Wow! That I hope the scream. mics got some of that. Did did they get some of that? Because that was amazing. Yeah. Someone's in the sound booth right now screaming. screaming. So uh, Microsoft is working on basically things. Yeah, you know, uh, kind of in in the Hololens vein. Like they're working on the holographic beyond. The current stuff, and they're partnering with a bunch of different companies. Of one of which being HTC for VR, AR type stuff going forward. Oculus not on the list of people they're partnering with. So ah. okay, okay. So confirmation. Thank you, Peter is a B on Twitter saying Tumblr is filled with porn, and it's not even allowed by the site's terms of service. Wow, nobody, really? Nobody no told Tumblrers what yeah. to do. I want to go back. Okay, okay. let's go back. We did not sufficiently back, bitch about. Play of the game in Overwatch. Okay, okay. bitch about and it. How it wasn't just complete. We just weren't there yet. Yeah. It's 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 bullshit. It's total bullshit. I love to watch I, the you're, guy you're get upset for a different one kill one, and then I mean, another I'm, kill and then that's it. I'm so. upset for a number of reasons. Yeah, but one of my biggest complaints is that typically as a support character, like if you play Mercy, you will, you will never get play of the game. I have I have resurrected my team so many times. I have I've I've, I've healed like fifty percent of okay. our team damage Gus, before. Gus, so Gus, nothing. Gus, Here's Gus. the thing. There's two two things about that. First off, you do get play of the game as Mercy because I have a teammate that plays Mercy and they're very good and they get to play the game and it's him pressing How? 
him pressing fucking Q and rezzing four people. I've done that. So that's the other thing. Is like you sound bitter, but that was very important tactically. I'm like, sure it's it's totally important. But at the same yeah. time, like the system is flawed, and that most of those play of the games are someone hitting Q, like using their ultimate, and it's just like it's not. Sometimes it's a talented thing. I, saw, I will say yes. Applying your ultimate correctly can be a, an act of act of very large sure. But skill. In, in a lot of cases, it's like I'm mercy push Q win. I saw a play of the game the other day that was just like. Hanzo shooting someone from a distance, yeah. like right as they were about to use their so, ultimate, and I can see, okay, the suppressing someone else's ultimate is fine, but it's like you don't know what would have happened. It's like it was the most boring play of the game ever. He had his bow yeah. and shot once. It's the, the, play the, of the, the game. The, the type of play of the game is listed in the video when it's shown. It'll be like shut down or I don't know. It is. That. Yes, I didn't know that. Yes. So in the, in the highlight of the play of the game, you can see on the left it'll say like what it is shut down or like when it or, went in or game ultimate. or yet when you go back when, in the you, highlights when you're watching it when you're when you're watching really? it really yeah. Um, so you, you'll you'll know kind of what their context is of like why that is picked mm. as the play of the game, but it's generally pretty boring. I mean, it, let's be honest; it's an algorithm that has to pick something, and it's a computer there, that's the, not that smart. It's going right. to find yeah. lots of kills right. or something. There, there, like was, that. An there was an article. It's going to pick Bastion holding down the left mouse button. That is; those are my least favorite ones. <laughs> I've seen one of those in a while. Like in the beta, it was every yes. match. Was people have now that the people, game people is more fucking wide, be Bastion now. Yeah, people know mm -hmm. how to counter yeah. Bastion effectively. Yeah. The best is. When you're Genji, oh, and you just yeah. turn, you know, all that you, shit right back on him. You know what I love is Genji, or like playing against Genji, and I'm fighting a Genji, then he does this thing where he blocks all bullets that are coming at you, and he'll shoot wherever he's aiming. I'll stop shooting him, and then my teammates start fucking shooting him, and I die because oh. of their <laughs> fucking reflective bullets. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, it's so frustrating. It's that's a fun thing about games when they first come out, multiplayer games, is there's inevitably someone who's completely overpowered, no one knows how to deal with them, and then in a week or two, that's it's like then you, don't, a joke. you don't have to balance yeah. that anything. Everyone figures it out. They're useless now, and someone else is completely overpowered because someone figured out like this secret thing. Like, there, is, there is a fad about oh, like who's overpowered and who's not because I was the, a few days it was like Bastion, and then I started playing McCree, and I went on the the subreddit. And I He's noticed one post as fuck from point blank. I, so I, I went on, I went on the subreddit. Yeah. There was one post, and it was like, "Who's your least favorite character to play a play a, a, against, and why is it McCree?" And then the next day, and then the past three days have just been McCree hate. Show, show me where he is rough from up um, close. God, it fucking says it, it. It says it somewhere here. This is. We're looking at um, a play we're, of the game. We're looking at play of the game. Gus wants Adam to show him. Gus where I've never seen this. I wish we Gus, could pull up the class. The Gus demands the proof. I swear it will Prove say something. It. If it's a shutdown, sometimes it will say shutdown. Maybe mm. it doesn't have a classification for all of them. I'll just shut uh, down. Yeah, no, who's that? Fucking uh, May is also annoying. To May is I, annoying I, because people don't know how to play her and they wall off their teammates when you're like, so when you're, when you're doing well. an ult against someone and then your friendly May shoots up yeah. a ice wall. Like, you fucking idiot. I think people thought May was a joke in the beta and nobody played her, but I always thought she was a really powerful character. Like her ability she to is. just slow you down with her attack, mm -hmm. you know, so, it, coupled with a high, because she's relatively low DPS, but you pair up with someone who's, you know, really good burst DPS, you could fucking destroy people. So yeah. there, there's a meta in Overwatch and it, people like look at the competitive matches that have been played. Yes. So, so it sometimes it does say it like in the middle, at okay. the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's like a meta of who is who is who is in for competitive play and who is out. And May is out. My favorite character, Farah, is out. And the reason is because they like May doesn't necessarily fill a role the way Emma Cree does because she's mm -hmm. not as high damage. You can't shut down ults, that sort of thing. And I feel like that's the one thing that is disappointing me about Overwatch is that every character isn't viable necessarily in the meta. <sighs> I don't. I mean, I, I see you I, May I get, flip a, I, a situation. I get what you were saying. Hard. I think. I think Fair is super powerful. I think May is super powerful. But if you look at the competitive games that have been played, like in the beta and stuff like that, it's all a certain roster of characters. Mm -hmm. Because, like for Farah, if you're flying around as Farah and there's a good Widowmaker, you're fucked. Yep. That's the same thing as Tracer. If you're Tracer and there's a good Widowmaker, they will just take you right down. But isn't that part of the game is getting Countering characters players. that mm -hmm. can counter? Yeah. But the, the, I think the, the the reasoning for them not using a Farah is because if there's a good Widowmaker, you're always going to get shut down, and you are better off playing a character that fits into that meta better. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting reports on Twitter that indeed the mics did pick up the all screen. the screaming. <laughs> yeah, they went on for a while. So, uh, there's a lot of screaming. They, they have heard it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a nice treat for all the audio <laughs> people. I wonder what that's a preview for. I don't know. Something Spoiler. Fun. I'll have to guess. Something bad happens to somebody. So we have a. Uh, <laughs> what? I'm, I'm a In little one disappointed. of our shows. <clears throat> After, uh, you know, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch and, you know, I was out of town this past weekend, so I couldn't really play this weekend. And I feel like I'm going to be traveling a lot again here soon, so I'm going to fall out of practice because we got E3 and Let's Play Live coming up, so I'm going to be gone for a while. I, with that. 
Wish they had a fucking Mac client. Yeah, and then immediately after that, we've got RTX delivered by Pizza Hut, you know, here uh, July 1st to 3rd in Austin. Yeah. And it's just going to be like, I'm going to be... And end of this month, they're coming out with competitive. I'm, I'm trying right. to... Oh, no, we didn't they delay it? I think no, they no, delayed no, it. No, 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 that got reversed. They, they, were oh, they, they responded. Were they delayed? I know, they responded to that tweet, and then they said, <laughs> yeah, uh, our bad, I it's actually late, or it's actually June. So I assume it's going to be your late June. Did they move it like one day July. just to say that it was still delayed? I don't know. Don't they know you get death threats if you do that? <laughs> oh, man, that's fucked. Yeah, that's uh, so. That's, yeah, that's in no reference. Man, no I'd already Sky. taken vacation, so I was ready for competitive play. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should Poor come no back to Sky Overwatch. Man. But yeah. Overwatch. Oh, okay. Well, before we go there, Overwatch does not have oh, a Mac client. Um, Trying to segue. Yeah, it's great. Down. You know, yes. We do want to get. I got there. shut we down. Do. It like, doesn't have a Mac like, client. Like, right. Blizzard yeah. always has had Mac clients day one with all of their games. This is the first time ever that they've launched a game with no Mac client, which is really good for productivity. They Flash. They didn't make a game for a non viable platform. They, they, they've always made games for non-viable yeah, every platforms. Fucking game. Like, I mean, right. I remember they, just decided they got to not, smarter. So they decided not to. Yeah, but it's... Yeah, but it's... It, I want to play it on my laptop. <laughs> yeah, it runs on a toaster. Get a good one. <laughs> Get a gaming laptop. <laughs> but the, you don't need, I can like, play games on this. Yeah. But right. not, solitaire not doesn't that count. game you can't. Yeah, I can play Heroes of the Storm. I can still play Ass Tracer, I guess, in another <laughs> Blizzard game. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. So, All right. getting death threats. Back to segue. Yeah, so No Man's Sky got delayed to August. It's not bad. It's like a six-week delay, I want to say, because it was going to come out June 21st. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was super excited because I'm still, like, I want to play the game and go, ah, or, eh. Because I like that game, you look at it and you're like, yeah, that looks yeah. super cool. I have no idea what to do, but it looks well, so really cool. Th there was a weird reason they delayed that, though. They, he said that there are a few key highlights. Um, let me let me look up the over. statement that they made. But I think the, the, that's the wording he used. Here's what I'm afraid and, and, of. And, and, and in a v giant galaxy universe open world game sandbox, what are the highlights? And what I'm what I'm afraid of with that game is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a giant universe thing. Uh, but anything that is discovered, everybody sees. Yeah, right? So, so if I find the planet first, my name's on that planet. Yeah, Everyone so it's theoretically shared that. universe. Listen, dude. But there are more planets than any I know. any person in the world. You're gonna find your own fucking. Well, there's planet. gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be like, Listen, uh, I'm just gonna get nuts was here first no, on the, every the, planet the, the in this. Point, I'm point, gonna spawn in the middle the of the nuts was here first galaxy. There are so, the, the number of planets. Are there's just way like too that, many. That I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm in galaxy of like, teabag. How many trillions of planets did they say? It was huge. Yeah, I'd look up. And it's it's something like if you were. Like, if you were uh, to spend, like, a second on each planet, it would still be, like, millions of years. Something crazy yeah. like that. That's still not the way my luck works. I'm, no. I well, am going to no. be subject number one of Teabag Universe. So, if, you, if, if you, like... What uh, I hear about this game is it'll actually be very, very difficult for you to even encounter another person. Like, the, the universe is supposed to be so big that you could have no. hundreds of thousands of players and still not encounter one another. Didn't, didn't, so it's no, got 18 quintillion planets. Right. So it's such a huge number... That if you went to every planet and spent one second on each planet, it would take you five billion years to see all like, of the planets. Take, take a take a game like Overwatch that had nine million people playing in the beta. Divide eighteen quintillion by nine million. How many planets per person I'm is just that? Just saying, there'll be. Like, you, I don't Captain even know how many zeros are on a quintillion. <laughs> okay, right. there, there. Five sets of three. It, I'm telling you, it's eighteen four four six seven four four zero seven three seven zero nine five five one six one six. Is what that, is that to number? a power? That's eighteen quintillion. Oh. Um, okay, so here's the the statement is um, as we approach our final deadlines, we realize some key moments needed extra polish to bring them up to our standards. So it's key, key moments. it's it's pretty, maybe they found some bad UI. Maybe it's a pretty standard so, as far as like a delay goes. So now so, it's August 9th in North America, August 10th in Europe, and uh, the 12th in the UK, which is apparently not part of Europe. That would be pretty normal for a normal game, but this is a game where they've said there are no scripted events. It's just a sandbox. Like what moment? It's not a linear game. What moments are they talking about? It's yeah. not like you're going to get to the end of the game and that end of the game moment is unpolished. They're figuring you know, out how to block the box. It could be something too about like when you discover a new planet, exactly how that unfolds. Like okay. you know, it could be as easy as like, oh, we needed to, we need to change the way this flashes and presents. Like maybe they're going to do a zoom out and be like, planet named Teabag Ryan. Or, you know, like, I'm just maybe you, they're trying is, to, like, polish that to make those discoveries I, feel more momentous. I want this game to be good, so if they need to take time to do it, that's fine. I, 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 I agree. It's been delayed so many times that a six-week delay, not a problem. Also, but, do we do we mention the death threats thing? No, we haven't, I was going to say. But okay. <laughs> um, some people apparently very, very upset because um, the, the developer for Hello Games, Sean Murray, says that he's been getting death threats 
on Twitter. He actually took it really well. He said that um, the office now looks like Home Alone. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, that he's not taking it too serious, which is good because I de like none of them are really serious. But still, how do you be like, yo, your game's going to be, you got, I got to wait an extra six weeks. I'm going to kill you. Did you That's see? a little extreme, Look, don't did you, you think? No, they've got six weeks of extra time to do something. It's a little extreme. So the, the, yeah. the, the first, Idle hands. The first report of this was like Kotaku saw that there was some marketing material that said, Coming later summer or something like that. Yeah, the, and the they posted Game the first Spot, story. Uh, no, not GameSpot, GameStop um, had stickers to put over the release date that said coming soon, right. or June 21st was right. supposed to go. But so the first people to report on it was Kotaku, and the Kotaku reporter that reported on it tweeted, and there was someone that wrote him a death threat that was like, Yeah, for be, reporting like, on it. He's like, stay, stay tuned, we're coming for you. It's like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, it was funny. It was a DM on Twitter, too. And uh, it was like, it's like, No Man's Sky is my entire life. I like you've taken like all the joy from my life. I will kill you. And it's like for writing about and it. And he reported it that account to Twitter, and Twitter found that that account had committed no violations to their terms of service. So it wasn't until he laughed at Twitter for not taking action that they finally suspended the account. On, like honestly, Twitter's done that a lot before. There have been a lot of like crazy threats that have been reported, like like death threats, rape threats, there all kinds of violence, and people will send them to Twitter, and she'll be like, "Nah, it's fine." Facebook too. Actually, we need to remove anonymity on the internet. Bernie had a great idea. He thought that the best thing that the internet could possibly have is any account you have, anywhere you post anything, should just show your age by it. It should show your age <laughs> next to your name, no matter what. So it's like if... Yeah, but then everyone would be 116. Because 1900s is the go-to. But if, like, let's just, say let's just say there was some magic, and it would just uh. show your age. So that you then know... The age of like all people insulting you, giving you business advice, yep. telling you how the world works, and uh, all that stuff. I like you would have, you'd have like a much better grasp on how much you need to laugh at them and like laugh it off by because you'd know like this person hasn't even completed grade school yet. What are they doing? Real fast sidebar. Sidebar. So eighteen quintillion planets. If you had nine million people, which is a large number of people playing, finding a, game. Yeah. a new planet every second. It would still take him 65,000 years to find all the planets. Yeah, again, I'm telling you. It's if not you find one other <laughs> person's planet. I'm telling you, it's not. Here's the thing. You're thinking, oh, yeah, just all the players I'm up against. You're up against all the script kitties bots. And they're going to be teabagging every planet in the universe. No. Oh, it's going to happen. No, it It's going to happen. I it just won't. hope that we get. You, you wait until you fly over Lieutenant Stroke Me Off's planet. And you're like. And then you go over the next 200 that he did. I like. Lieutenant stroke me off. He seems like a nice guy. I mean, he's, he's demanding. He can stroke I, me off. I was actually thinking about the whole delay f and and who would it would affect most, and it's high schoolers because they're like it they're is off the kids in June, that are out of school uh -huh. right then. They plan their summer like all right, June nineteenth. I'm off school for two weeks, and or I off school for two months, and I got No Man's Sky, and now they get fucked, and that sucks to be. Uh, a well, high they schooler. can play Overwatch. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Hey, true. some people don't like it. By the way, but. if someone is is so passionate about a game that they're sending in death threats, is there any way that you make that customer happy with a finished product? Doubt it. Also, if you kill someone, doesn't that mean you get no game instead of late game? I don't know. Maybe in prison. There should there should be legal Norwegian recourse. Against, I hope there's legal recourse against that. There there, there is. There's, there's like, laws against, against them death playing threats, games, right? No, against the, with the person who sent a death threat to him. I'm saying there are laws yeah, for reporting that. Yeah, it, de it depends on the country. Yeah. It depends on the country, and a lot of times it has to do with whether it seems like it was serious or not. And it's kind of weird. Just yeah, we can, we can, there's no such <laughs> thing kidding, as a non I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> as I, well, it's like I put a winky face this at the guy, end, no, which clearly means gun. I was joking. Yeah. Winky face <laughs> means not serious threat. That's yeah. actually been like a, like a court argument. Like, if the wink, if there's a winky face, does that mean it was serious or not? That's oh. fucked. So does, we just everybody learned to put a winky face at the end of everything. That's what I do. Every, I'm not gonna kill you. Every time I threaten Winch. someone, I just put a winky face at the end. Uh, can we talk about Overwatch one more second? Sure. Like, <laughs> how much? How much money have you dumped into loot boxes? Uh, I when it first launched, I bought the pack of fifty loot boxes. Uh -huh. Was that like forty bucks? Yeah. And that's it. That's all I've spent. Why? So far. And that's in addition and I'm to. Guess, I'm guessing by your why you've bought none. That's in yeah. addition to your okay. re, to the retail price of the game. Correct. Did you buy the uh, hundred twenty dollar edition or the sixty dollar edition? Uh, the sixty dollar edition. Okay, we're, okay. I would I would think you buy the the collector's edition. Uh, no, no, the he, collector's he edition. All of his money on uh, that space I fucking love statues, game. and I did not. I didn't buy. Right, it's I it's too much physical stuff. I love the collector's editions. Blizzard does a great job with it, and they do a yeah. good job normally of the in-game rewards. It's just it's just more physical stuff. I I don't have space for. Okay. But uh, yeah, I just I it, it's so bad like. I bought the 50 boxes, and I was really excited. Then by like 
the thirties, you're like, all right, all right, I get it. Uh, like you start seeing well, the same yeah, you shit. You don't get any. It's See, just I, I find myself stuff. like opening them, and then like when I get down to like like twenty five percent of what I had initially bought, I'll like hold off for a while because I don't want it to end. You it's, don't want to be out. What, yeah. what is it that you're opening and you're like, ah, ah yes, this I got uh, the thing. Like they, the, the thing that hooked me was like. I got a, by natural progression of leveling, I got a loot box, and I've been playing only Pharah, and I got, like, the one legendary Pharah skin I wanted. I'm like, holy oh. shit, I got the one I oh, wanted. Oh, which one was it? It was the Mecha Queen, where she's a Gundam. I haven't seen that one. It's fucking cool. Um, but yeah, so then I've spent, I spent 40 bucks. I just wish that you either have a full retail game, or you have a bunch of microtransactions. Because it sounds like, at this point, a lot of people have spent uh, retail price on loot boxes in addition mm -hmm. to he, actually spending retail price on the game. Listen. I mean, you he, know, he, like here's why I, I'm okay with the pricing model. Okay. Because shoot it's me. sixty dollars. I'm not gonna shoot you. It's forty on <laughs> PC, by the way. <laughs> it's just winky face. I'm not gonna shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's sixty bucks for the game. But you get all the heroes. Oh, that's and, pretty sweet. and there are no there's no monetary So you don't get all the heroes. You get all the heroes now and all the heroes later. Okay. And on all the maps. Yeah. And on all that. You do not get any advantage by spending more money than anyone else. Okay. So what you're doing instead of pay, like what you're it's doing like by, by, by right. What you're doing by buying microtransactions is, is getting a step is getting cosmetic items. But you're also supporting them and saying, like, hey, I want more heroes, here's more money, and you can support their development cycle. Here's the and, thing though. and and yeah. because it's not a free to play game, because you have to pay forty or sixty bucks to play it, you're not getting a bunch of idiots coming on there that are being a bunch of jerks. Here's what they didn't do though. Uh, with the loot box purchases, you can get repeat items. Yes. So it's but, not you but, don't get but, a unique set of items with every loot but box. They, but when you get when you get when you get a repeat, you get some coin for that. You, you get can, a, a fraction. But you can then use coins totally. to unlock you, uh, the other stuff. Like, but I, I don't. Have. I would say your return. Let's say you got especially when you're getting. I have towards three, the I, end. I have three thousand coin. Yeah. I can buy three legendary skins or a pretty much any of the other yeah. stuff I want. I think after I b bought the 50 loot boxes, when it was all said and done, due to duplicates, I had about 2,000 coins. I think your return on in-game currency is nowhere near the amount of money you're feeding into it. Uh, Probably not Especially you're getting, you're, later in, uh, once you've had unlocked a bunch of things. Not. I don't think so either, I think it gets worse later on. I think Ryan's I, I correct about that. I guarantee it's going to yeah. hit a wall where it's like, well, why would I buy a loot box? Because it's when, just, And then you don't but, get money either. But, but then by that point... Yeah. Does Blizzard care? They've already got like no, 150 already bucks out of a person. No. But what bothers me, what and this is maybe why it bothers me more, there's an Xbox achievement for getting all the unlocks for one character. That's crazy. That is just a whore bag of an achievement. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. I've seen what kind of achievement? Whore bag. There, there's a streamer I've <laughs> watched that's, that spent like three or hundred bucks or, or no, 150 bucks or so, and he's not even like halfway done mm -hmm. like any of the characters. There's you, no way to get. Can you earn coins? Through gameplay, uh, no, no. The only, you, so you get free boxes in okay. gameplay every time by you leveling level, up. Every time you level, you get a free box, and which is gets harder as you get higher I, level, but, as per but, usual. But when you when you when you reach reach a hundred, which will take fucking a long time, when you reach a hundred, you can prestige, and then those first twenty levels, you get a boost. So, oh, great! So, yeah, so but you get four hundred hours in. I can go back to getting I, one I, every I five minutes. I get where you're coming from, but again, <laughs> there's no advantage to it. You're not like you're not getting a like a stat advantage over anyone else. It's true. Don't tie an achievement so to it. You get it. You get loot boxes, and that's how you earn. If you get a duplicate in the loot box, that's how you earn currency. But again, the loot boxes can also drop a skin for you that you want. And like, or I happen, you can just get. A, I happen a, to get the Mecha Queen skin. You can't actually just get a thing that is just. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. If you get, you can have different tiers of uh, drops of currency. But that's the only way to get it. So you can use that currency to unlock. Like if you were focused on one character, you can just pay for the unlocks. On it. I've got that but one. You have to get a lot of loot boxes. Blue to double okay, up. so it's the, gotcha. the other one. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. All right, yeah. well, that's a pretty crazy economy. Thanks for letting me Overwatch. We need to wrap up. Yeah, uh, we, it's time to go play more Overwatch. Yeah. So and thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Bye.